Hello, welcome back to our Advent Reflections uh, Advent Together. I don't know about you, but I'm not very good with surprises. I like to know what's going on, I like to have a plan, I like to kind of have all the information at my fingertips. So whenever someone manages to pull off a nice surprise for me, um, there is a sense of shock and there is a sense of joy, because actually sometimes it is nice to be surprised. I hate bad surprises though, uh, problems that I didn't foresee and all sorts of things like that, because I like to know what's going on and to have a plan. That's just me. The Christmas story, when you think about it, is a little bit unexpected. It's a little bit odd. It's not what you would have thought would happen when God came back to the world. Our story today shows us that uh, the unexpected isn't just Jesus, but the unexpected was part of his family tree too. Our story today comes from one of the books in the Old Testament called 1 Samuel, and it's a story about how the first king of Israel uh, was succeeded by a new king. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16. The Lord said to Samuel, the prophet, how long will you go on grieving over Saul, who was the first king of Israel? I have rejected him as king of Israel. But now get some olive oil and go to Bethlehem. A man named Jesse is waiting for you because I have chosen one of his sons to be the king. Jesse brought his seven sons to Samuel. And Samuel said to him, no, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Then he asked him, do you have any more sons? Jesse answered, there is still the youngest, but he's out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, tell him to come here. We won't offer the sacrifice until he has come. So Jesse sent for him. He was a handsome, healthy young man and his eyes sparkled. The Lord said to Samuel, this is the one, anoint him. Samuel took the olive oil and anointed David in front of his brothers. Immediately, the spirit of the Lord took control of David and was with him from that day on. The people of Israel had cried out for a king for years. They wanted to be like all the other nations. Eventually, God gave in and let them have a king, but the first king of Israel, King Saul, didn't do a very good job. The power went to his head. And so before King Saul had died, God decided he was no longer going to bless Saul and sought out a new king. He chose a little shepherd boy, someone with no military experience, someone with no great, potentially no great intelligence, and because he was just merely a shepherd. But God chose him because of his wisdom and because of his faithfulness to God. When Jesus was born, people had been waiting for years for a great hero to come and be their saviour, to rescue them from their enemies. No one was expecting a baby born in a stable with a couple of nobodies for parents. Jesus wasn't born into our royal family. His dad was just a carpenter. When he grew up, Jesus wasn't a great warrior that all Israel had been expecting. He let people take him and kill him without a fight. All completely unexpected. So I've got a couple of questions for you based on the theme of unexpected. Can you think of any other Bible stories where God has worked in unexpected ways? And secondly, how would you like God to use you in this world?
it's amazing the ways in which God sometimes works. And I am one of those people that have shared the story that I hear so often, which is this, I can't do that. I'm only this person or that person. We often think we aren't good enough to share in the story that God is telling in this world, to share in the work that God is doing in this world. We often think we're not good enough, but the Christmas story reminds us that God can be a God who uses the unexpected. God longs to use each of us to change his world, to make it a better place. We might not think we're good enough, but God knows we are. And that's why he chooses to use us. And so today to remember that God uses the unexpected and to remind us to trust in God's assessment of whether we're good enough or not. We're going to place the symbol of a shepherd's crook on our Jesse tree to remind us of King David. But first, let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you like to use people that the world doesn't think are important. Please use me too. Amen.